Welcome to the second part of Project Croydon, where I refurbish a BMW E91 325i Touring. I already have a straight 6 330i convertible with the N53 engine and 268bhp that I use in the summer, but was inspired after watching M539 restorations on YouTube, refurbish a BMW E46 325i Touring to look to buy a cheap daily runner that's more practical in the winter that I can also use for shopping, gardening, taking rubbish to the recycling centre or carrying my many vinyl records and equipment when I go out DJing. In the first part I managed to get the car running again. Here is that ecstatic moment. It just freaking started, bloody hell. It needed a new battery. It needed a fucking new battery. Can you believe it? The previous owner's now disreputable high street mechanics that will remain unmentioned had fitted the wrong battery because they neglected to recollect that this being a BMW 325i Touring meant that it has the bigger 3 litre engine, not a 2 litre engine, requiring a bigger, more powerful battery. This is also reflected in the yearly road tax, which is over £300. The line battery that I removed and replaced with a UASA battery was rated at 70 amps, not the required 80 amps. This explains why the battery charger kept saying that the line battery was fully charged, but it still could not start the car. After finally starting the car, I really needed to drive the car for an hour or so and fill the tank with fresh fuel, but was unable to due to being in a full lockdown with a strict stay at home order. Unfortunately, when I went to start the car the next day, it just would not start, even after trying to jump start the car with the 330i convertible. It finally started after being pushed by my helpful neighbors, which pointed to a faulty starter motor that I suspect failed after repeatedly trying to start the car with the wrong battery. I dropped the car at my local auto repair shop that fitted a new starter motor and since adding this the car now starts every time which is where I pick up this video. So now the car is a runner it is time to start to deal with some of the issues that this car has. Uh, the first issue is a pretty easy one to fix. Uh, as you can see the passenger side rear door handle uh, isn't closing. Now uh, the reason why I'm fixing this one first is because this is the uh, hardest one to close. If you happen to sit uh, in the driver's seat and try and close this door you can't from the inside uh, because the door doesn't shut so you've basically got to uh, get out of the car uh, and uh, go around the car and shut the door from the outside so uh, very very annoying and I uh, really cannot believe uh, that this issue is affecting uh, all doors on this car. In fact, I'm going to show you the other three uh, handles playing up as well. So now we are fixing the passenger side front and again uh, the door handle doesn't shut. Uh, if you have to try and close uh, this door from the inside again. You have to stand up and close uh, the handle from the outside. A simple application of WD-40 works like a charm uh, in this particular instance. Uh, there has been mention uh, on the internet uh, that you shouldn't use WD-40, which is uh, absolutely incorrect. This is the correct uh, fix ready for this problem uh, because uh, most modern cars have a clear coat painting uh, that uh, can easily uh, handle WD-40 so your paintwork will not be destroyed uh, by using uh, WD-40 if you uh, are uh, trying to uh, apply this on a, a modern car with a uh, clear coat. So uh, the uh, driver side uh, rear again same problem a little bit of WD-40 
and uh, just open and close the handle and uh, there you have it and finally we will fix the driver side uh, door itself and that is all for uh, doors resolved with a little bit of uh, WD-40. Now onto the first change that I've made on every BMW that I've ever owned exchanging the uh, chrome uh, kidney grills to uh, black ones sometimes matte black sometimes gloss here I'm fitting the uh, gloss uh, grill uh, because it uh, looks uh, good really uh, on uh, this particular color if you've got a colored car let's say red orange green blue that sort of thing uh, matte black grills tend to look uh, better than gloss but it depends on the color so you uh, may want to experiment but this is such a cheap uh, fix probably 20 quid to completely uh, transform uh, the look of the car if you're trying to do this with a BMW from 2020 you'll probably uh, need a, a crane All my previous BMWs have had uh, by Xenon uh, headlights and uh, I will be uh, looking to upgrade uh, these headlights to uh, Xenon uh, headlights. Uh, as you can see the front headlights there are uh, halogen light bulbs, the uh, inner uh, light bulbs just gone on, now the outer uh, one has come on and you can see it's a yellow uh, sort of tincture to the light. Uh, these halogen light bulbs you don't get as much light as with the xenons so that is uh, another uh, easy upgrade uh, easy because this is the M Sport uh, version of the E91 uh, so I'm not going to have to be making uh, too many expensive upgrades like the bumpers and the door sills and the gear uh, stick knob and the steering wheel and the heated seats and so forth uh, these uh, Xenon uh, light bulbs uh, come uh, really as a bonus even though I'll be upgrading them uh, to the OEM uh, Deodoric uh, light bulb. A big thank you to Xenon light bulbs. As you can see the headlights are far much brighter. You have the white light instead of the yellow a light, uh, many more lumens, uh, really uh, essential upgrade as uh, far as I'm concerned. Not only does it uh, improve the way the car looks, it really does improve uh, visibility. Uh, total costs were £110, uh, 60 quid uh, for the actual H7 uh, uh, light bulbs and 50 quid for the labour. He managed to fit the uh, H7 uh, bulbs without removing the front bumper which is a real bonus because uh, uh, that really would have added uh, cost really uh, to uh, the work. So these 18 inch MB3193M wheels come with the M Sport package. They are a desirable upgrade though uh, all four wheels look uh, really uh, to be in not very good shape so I'll be looking uh, to get these refurbished uh, if at all uh, possible. Unfortunately 
cracks were found in two of the wheels so I decided to upgrade all four wheels to these CSL style wheels in black. Here you can see the MV3193M alloy wheels that were on there before with loads of scuffs from uh, climbing curbs and so forth but the cracks are at the back of two of the wheels several cracks on uh, two of them two of the other wheels are okay so I'll be looking to uh, recoup some cash on uh, those I have a light bulb warning light displaying on the dashboard when I switch the car on. I'll show you how to quickly diagnose this fault. As you can see there, the light bulb is showing on the dashboard. You need to use the left hand side indicator. There's a scroller there and you're looking for the check control menu option. Once you find it, there you need to depress the BC button and keep that uh, pressed for about 20 seconds and you'll find an error code displayed on the dashboard there you have it CCID 123 which is the error code that I need to investigate to rectify this problem a quick search for BMW CCID error codes on the internet has brought me to this website there are numerous others that you can use to check your error codes if i scroll down this page you can see bmw ccid codes for vehicle lighting i'm looking for ccid 123 that is here and as you can see i have a rear light rear failure so that indicates that one of the light bulbs on the rear of the car on the right hand side has failed so that's uh, where I need to uh, locate my efforts when I am changing the light bulbs absolute child's play to diagnose exactly where the error code uh, is uh, not so easy if you don't have uh, this menu option I've seen a number of people use uh, pretty uh, protracted methods to try and diagnose uh, a failing uh, light uh, this uh, menu option on the car if you don't have uh, iDrive really uh, makes it as easy as one two three it's pretty quick and simple to replace the tail lights on a BMW E91 Touring I am folding down the rear seats to give me some extra space as I'm about to remove four panels at the back to allow me access to the uh, light assemblies open the boot and remove the panel at the bottom that typically covers the spare wheel you can see immediately just how useful that extra space is 
created by folding the rear seat. Next up we're going to remove the right hand side panel by removing two clips at the bottom. I'm missing one there, the second one there you just pull it upwards. It's a little pin clip that will allow you to uh, remove the right hand side panel and then there's a plastic uh, cover over the battery that has two clips on the right hand side panel that you need to turn left and then just lift off the protective plastic cover over the battery and then you've got complete access to the right hand side tail light assembly. There are the two clips over the plastic cover, the top just pull off the cover over the battery. There are two actions to perform to remove the tail light assembly. The first is to detach the electrical connector. You just pull it out there. Pay special attention to the position of my thumb when I press down on the assembly to grab the assembly out. Some pressure on your thumb will allow you to uh, detach the right hand side light assembly. And there you can see the bottom right hand side bulb is definitely blown. The middle bulb doesn't look too great either. The centers of the uh, light bulbs are a pretty good indicator to the condition. I intend to replace uh, all eight tail light bulbs, so we're going to remove the left hand side tail light assembly shortly. This is far simpler, all you need to do is just remove the uh, panel over the first aid kit, and you have immediate access and it's a mirror of what you've just done on the right hand side. Detach the uh, electrical connector and then a little bit of pressure in the middle towards the bottom of the tail light assembly will allow you to detach and unclip the left hand side tail light assembly. That's how quick and simple it is to uh, gain access to the tail light on a BMW E91 Touring. And again, the centers of the bulbs are a pretty good indicators to the condition. We're going to replace all eight next. close inspection of the lights you can definitely see the right hand side bottom is blown it looks as if four of them look okay the other four not so okay I'm going to replace all eight light bulbs because it costs around ten pounds to get a pack of ten highly reputable light bulbs from Osram. It really doesn't make sense to wait for the other bulbs to fail when you can uh, easily replace all of them for £10. It's P21W, the code you can see on the light bulb box on the left you'll shortly be able to see that on the light assembly and all you do is you just there you can see P21W just so you don't make a mistake 
by placing the wrong bulb it's pretty important obviously on some cars you have a red light bulb for the indicator you don't want to uh, install the wrong light bulb uh, to remove the light bulb you just press down and turn it anti-clockwise and it just uh, pulls out pretty important that you use gloves here you don't want to leave any residue on the surface of the bulb they tend to burn quite brightly and hot and again there P21W is the code for all the uh, bulbs on the left hand side assembly you can see that on the box and there are the old or currently uh, installed light bulbs that I purchased with the car and there are the 10 new ones and to install the bulb all you need to do is just uh, push it down and turn it clockwise it's very easy and there I've just installed the other seven and I've two new ones left and it's that easy to replace the bulbs on the tail light uh, assembly there I've picked the wrong tail light for the wrong side it's important that you don't try and force this I should have uh, put a little sticker to mark the left and right but you can actually see it pretty easily which one goes to which side and to reinstall the light assembly all you need to do is just push it in and it will slot uh, in and you'll definitely hear a click then just reconnect the electrical connector push it in everything's quite firm and sturdy there and a mirror of the right hand side tail light assembly you just clip it in there it's just slotted in immediately definitely hear it click reconnect the electrical connector on the right hand side tail light assembly and yeah it's that simple to reinstall the tail light assemblies now we've got the cover for the first aid kit to replace on the left hand side first and then the plastic protective cover protective cover over the battery that has two clips towards the top that you need to turn to position the protective plastic cover and then the right hand side panel there's two pin clips to hold it in place I'm missing one and I've just dropped one over my glove where the spare wheel usually sits if you can spot it there that's where it is so I just need to locate that and then place that back on the right hand side panel there is the pin clip the car was missing the other one when I purchased it I will order one and finally the uh, panel over the spare wheel and it's that simple to replace the tail lights on a BMW E91 touring unfortunately the CCID error code is still displaying on the dashboard when I start the car so I'm going to perform some additional diagnosis I am going to 
step on the brake and put the car into drive as you can see there now I am yes I am in reverse and driving back and forwards uh, activating the uh, rear tail lights to see uh, which one isn't working I am recording a video as well as this one is running showing the lights uh, activating and we'll jump to that in a brief moment uh, very useful uh, technology these uh, mobile phones and videos that can really help you uh, diagnose a fault uh, on your own typically this would have required uh, more than one person in the past because obviously somebody's got to drive the car and you uh, can't really see what's happening at the back of the car so uh, if you've got two cameras that's a handy way to uh, diagnose uh, failing uh, tail lights to see which one is failing to activate uh, I am just cycling through all the lights in the car at the moment and as I said we're gonna jump to the uh, rear camera in just a second and as you can see I'm stepping on the brake immediately you can see that the brake light on the inner tail light on the left isn't activating so you can see kind of like this three long lines on the right uh, but on the left the inner one uh, isn't working uh, the uh, reverse lights are both working those white lights are the reverse uh, parking lights and you've got the brake lights that are working the indicators are all fine uh, the issue is definitely the uh, brake light which is obviously very important if you're driving at speed and you step on the brake and somebody's behind you uh, you definitely don't want them running into the back of you so a very important light uh, to replace uh, that we will do uh, in a brief moment It's even quicker and simpler to gain access to the inner tail light assemblies. If you open up the boot, you'll need a trim removal tool. I have one here. And you'll need to use that to detach three clips on the panel on the tailgate. There are three. The one on the left is quite loose so I won't really need to detach that but using the uh, trim removal tool you just slide out the middle one and the right hand side one and you have complete access now to the tailgate where you just need to remove the foam on either side to obtain access to the taillight assembly and if you just watch where my thumb and index finger are you can just unclip the taillight assembly by applying a little bit of pressure towards you my left hand is on the camera so I can't really disconnect the electrical connector Again, if you just watch where my thumb and index finger are, here I'm detaching the right hand side inner tail light assembly. I'll put the camera on a mount shortly. That will allow me to detach the electrical connectors. Obviously, if you were uh, not filming a video, you'd have just been able to detach uh, the inner tail light assemblies by using both hands and there all you need to do is to detach the electrical connector pretty much the same as the uh, outer taillight assemblies and remove the inner taillight assembly and 
exact mirror on the other side you just need to disconnect the electrical connector and you have access to the inner right tail light assembly and you can change the bulbs there the left and right tail light assembly areas are empty and you have the uh, tail light assemblies ready to have the bulbs replaced you can see there the middle left hand side tail light looks pretty bad again the centers are pretty good indicators as to the uh, condition of the bulb will be replacing uh, all four of the uh, bulbs I don't have the top two bulbs but at least now I know uh, what the code is and I'll be able to order those and replace those two um, and there we have the four replacement bulbs you know the drill press the bulb into the center and turn it anti-clockwise to remove it and in just a moment I'll install uh, all four new uh, light bulbs there they are four brand new light bulbs installed on the left and right inner tail light assemblies ready to be returned to the car there you can see the code is a H21W code for those two light bulbs that I didn't replace to re return the tail light assemblies you just reconnect the electrical connector and slide the assembly back in and just be sure to hear it click in yeah it definitely needs to be firmly back in place and just return the foam over the tail light assembly to protect it from dust and exactly the same on the mirror on the left hand side in a tail light assembly you just reconnect the electrical connector and slide the tail light assembly back and hear it click in click and then you can just return the foam that protects the tail light and just click back the tail gate panel in place and that's how easy it is to install your inner tail light assemblies and close the boot if we go to start the car you'll find that the warning light for the light bulb has gone away I have a check engine light and I'm going to show you how this fantastic OBD2 scanner will help you diagnose uh, that check engine light. Uh, if you purchase uh, this uh, C Reader 529 uh, scanner by launch, 
uh, be sure to update the firmware. Uh, this is uh, what you need uh, to do to connect the scanner to your car uh, 12 inches uh, away from uh, the center of your steering wheel you'll find an OBD port in most cars uh, that were made uh, from the 1990s and this is how you connect it and you can see that the launch control uh, activates. You need to make sure that your engine is switched on to allow the launch Sea Reader 529 to be able to diagnose your car. Here I'm going to take you through some of the options. I have just uh, clicked the diagnose option. There are eight uh, menu options on the main menu. And here it gives you uh, various information relating uh, to uh, the car and it now has some fault codes of which this one has an O2 sensor out of range during deceleration uh, bank to sensor 1 error. So uh, that is uh, what is causing the check engine light on this car. Uh, now you can uh, Google that error. You can uh, advise uh, the people that are going to repair your car that you've been able to uh, uh, detect that code. Uh, that will uh, really help uh, them schedule your car or uh, decide really whether it's a serious problem or not. So uh, this is why this launch uh, C-Reader 529 uh, uh, control is just uh, absolutely fabulous. I'm showing the O2 sensor out of range during deceleration. I'm looking to uh, see if this launch uh, C reader can tell me information about bank 2 sensor 1. That is where the fault code uh, is being generated, but this vehicle doesn't uh, support that. So I now need to take uh, this car to uh, a, uh, an, an auto shop essentially. Uh, and uh, have them look at it. Uh, a brief look at the internet seems to suggest that it could be a sensor at the bottom that's gone or it could be the catalytic converters uh, that need to be replaced. Uh, either way, uh, I now have a diagnosis uh, rather than uh, suffering uh, really the anxiety of your car being uh, in for a service. There you can see uh, that the check engine light is on uh, the uh, launch C Reader 529 can clear that code, and I'll show you uh, that now. So, there, clear reset, uh, related diagnostic information. Uh, it tells you to make sure that obviously your engine's not running. You hit OK, and it's been cleared. And now, when I uh, turn the engine on again, the check engine light has gone away so absolutely a fantastic tool this uh, launch C reader 529 so we have an O2 sensor out of range bank 2 sensor 1 error code that has been detected by this fantastic uh, C reader OBD2 scanner uh, by launch this 529 uh, C reader that has detected the uh, error code on my BMW. I would highly recommend that you purchase one of these uh, OBD2 scanners if you have a BMW over five years old. It's a very, very effective uh, way to uh, diagnose uh, faults uh, on your car and it only costs uh, £49. Uh, that's how much I paid for this one. Uh, after uh, diagnosing the O2 sensor uh, out of range bank two sensor one error code. I uh, spoke with my neighbor who is a car mechanic. I'm very fortunate to have a car mechanic neighbor. He lives just two uh, houses down. And he suggested that I replace the uh, MAF sensor or mass airflow sensor, uh, which is what I did. I 
happen to have the original uh, MAF sensor that was on the car. This is the original one here. This is a Siemens Video uh, MAF sensor, MAF sensor, mass airflow sensor. This is the one that was on the car. If you're looking to replace a, a mass airflow sensor on your BMW, always make sure that you use OEM parts. You won't be able to get this from Siemens, but Video is the supplier. Uh, brand new from BMW, this is going to cost you £320. You can get that for around half uh, as much, really, uh, from Video, so around £150. Uh, do not uh, use non OEM parts because that will be. Uh, the commencement of additional problems in your BMW where many people go wrong uh, when they are working on BMWs is where they try and save money uh, by buying uh, cheap imitation parts uh, that invariably is the commencement of additional uh, problems on your BMW that you'll find very difficult to uh, diagnose so an original OEM part from a video is what you need uh, I uh, paid £32 for a second-hand uh, part on eBay, which was very useful for me to uh, diagnose the fault. Uh, unfortunately for me, after replacing the MAF sensor, the O2 sensor, out of range back to sensor 1 error code, uh, returned. So it was pretty clear that it wasn't the MAF uh, sensor that was at fault. So uh, again, probably uh, worth uh, always making sure that you uh, research the actual fault code rather than maybe uh, trying to uh, find out what might be wrong when you've got a clear indication as to what the problem was. Had I just gone on to Google and entered that particular error code uh, I would have found that I needed to replace uh, this. This is a Lambda sensor or more commonly known as an O2 sensor which is the part that needed to be uh, replaced on the car. Uh, inside I've got the actual part that was on my car. This is the uh, component that was failing. Uh, you can see that it's uh, pretty mucky and uh, dirty really. I believe that to clean this uh, you can uh, soak it in alcohol. Uh, I'm pretty certain there will be additional uh, methods really where you can uh, clear and you know the uh, residue on the OT sensor but it, look it just makes sense uh, to uh, replace the part uh, rather than uh, trying to recondition it uh, because obviously it is likely to not last as long it's been in the car for a good 14 years now uh, so yeah probably a good time to replace it with a brand new one which is what I proceeded uh, to do uh, this is the original uh, part the product code if you're looking to replace this. I entered my uh, VRM into the BMW service uh, centre. Uh, they have a parts uh, website and uh, that led me to uh, the wrong product code so you need to be very careful if you're ordering this part. Uh, many people tend to order the wrong one and end up having to uh, return it. Uh, yeah that is the Lambda sensor. Uh, that uh, was causing the check engine light on my car. Now I have uh, some footage uh, of me uh, replacing uh, the O2 sensor or attempting to replace uh, the O2 sensor. I uh, removed the cowling uh, on the car which I will show uh, now uh, and uh, yeah that is what you need to do uh, to gain access to the two metal plates uh, that will uh, allow you to uh, replace the mass uh, airflow sensor or O2 sensor rather the lambda sensor on your uh, E91 BMW 325i Touring. We're going to replace the O2 sensor on this BMW E91 Touring. There is the first sensor there is another sensor on the left beneath the two metal plates there. That is the second O2 sensor in a far much more awkward uh, position. So we're going to have to remove uh, the engine cover. And in order to do that, we're going to have to remove the cowling, which is what we're going to uh, do in this video. I'll show you the 
uh, steps that you need to do uh, to uh, remove the cowling. There are four screws uh, at the top of the cabin air filter that you need to remove. There's another two screws in front of it. The panels on the left hand side and the right hand side. I'm removing the right hand side panel. There they have two clips at the top and the bottom of them. Just need to lift that off. And then there are two sensors uh, on either side that you also need to unclip and there are two 10 uh, millimeter sockets that you need to remove. That is the second uh, bit of trim that you need to just lift off that's covering, I think, probably the brake fluid. Uh, it might be, uh, sorry, power steering fluid. Um, one of the fluids anyway. Um, and there's a little connector there. Very useful to record this. Uh, if you need to know how to put this all back together again, So, yeah, there's a cable that threads through at the bottom there, and you just need to unclip it. And be careful, really, where you place that uh, cable. So, uh, there are four 8mm uh, uh, screws that you need to remove. This is the first one for the cabin air filter. There's another three uh, to remove. And then there are two at the front of the cabin air filter. Uh, once uh, they've been uh, unscrewed, you can just lift the cabin air filter uh, off. So those are the three main bits of trim that you need to remove to allow you uh, access to remove the panel uh, beneath the cabin air filter there is the uh, third screw 8mm to remove I will be investing in some power tools, no doubt, uh, to expedite uh, jobs like this. Um, but a simple 8mm socket wrench will allow you to achieve uh, the same outcome. This is the fourth and final screw at the top of the cabin air filter. There are another two uh, in front uh, that you need to remove. As you can see there, it's still uh, pretty uh, sturdy. do apologize if there are any uh, mistakes I'm making. I am uh, an enthusiast forward slash hobbyist. I'm not uh, uh, the world's uh, sort of best uh, technician at this. I uh, no doubt will improve. So if you spot anything that I'm doing incorrectly, uh, do chime in uh, with uh, the comments. Uh, I won't take them too personally. Um, but yeah, there is uh, definitely uh, the right way and the wrong way of doing uh, this work really on these BMWs. Uh, you definitely want to make sure that you're doing work that's of a very high standard. And there it just lifts off the cabin air filter. Uh, it also means that I can change that cabin air filter uh, on my own if I need to. But typically I would have uh, required the uh, servicing center to do. There I am unclipping one of the sensors uh, using a screwdriver. There. It has a little clip at the center that you can uh, just uh, unclip using a screwdriver. Uh, there's another one uh, on the right hand side. Basically there are two sensors that you need to unclip. I'm probably going to remove the 10 millimeter socket at first, 
uh, there's another 10 millimeter socket on the left hand side as well and then you're done really with the screws so four uh, eight millimeter sockets at the top two uh, beneath uh, for the cabin air filter then there are two 10 millimeter sockets on either side uh, that you need uh, to uh, remove uh, you also need to unclip the two sensors uh, there's the uh, boot sensor on the right hand side I forgot what this left hand side sensor is for and then you need to unclip the uh, center there it's a bit weird uh, because you, you basically need to unclip it uh, a bit right uh, I'll show you in just a second there it's just going to unclip very gently now it should come out there you have it and then there's another one and then it's a case of removing bonnet sensor, the boot sensor, that is wired into that panel uh, with some clips. You just need to unclip those. Just be very careful. If you close the boot, uh, you're probably going to fray the wires uh, on these two sensors. So yeah, you just need to be very careful uh, where you place them. clipping the other sensor on the left that is attached to that panel where the cabin air filter sits that's the one that we need to remove there uh, is the other sensor as you can see if I'm to uh, close my boot I'm going to fray uh, those wires so you just need to be very wary and this should uh, lift off with a little encouragement cables are also connected to that a bit of plastic you're going to need to unclip them there that's just come off I'm gonna go to the right hand side and uh, unclip it and then that panel can be removed and finally that comes off you can also do the clean and finally the screws uh, for the engine cover these aren't fastened uh, too uh, tight they're really easy to remove um, some um, mechanics uh, recommend not screwing uh, the final screw I'm going to remove at the back because if I had to remove all this cowling really to gain uh, access to that screw um, so if you need to remove the engine cover uh, easily in the future many tend to uh, leave the screw that I'm removing now off and they never return that back uh, so if they need to access the engine all they are doing is just removing the uh, screws at the front uh, of the engine But obviously uh, that bodes well for uh, BMW's uh, servicing fees uh, and that's how easy it is to remove uh, the engine cover on a BMW E91 Touring. Oodles more space ever since the engine cover has been removed. You're looking to remove those two metal plates there on the left hand side there are two screws that are holding those plates in. Uh, once you remove those two screws, the metal plates will lift off and that will allow you to remove the second uh, O2 sensor. Uh, but yeah, some new OEM parts to uh, unbox. And here is one of them. I hope this is the correct uh, part.
and have not given me just the standard gear stick knob because that's rather dull and boring. Uh, we'll see if we can. Just got to be careful to try and make sure I can return this and not completely damage the box. So there we have it. And fantastic, yes it is the correct part that comes with uh, a new sort of leather covering as well. Now the uh, original one on the car has got some blue stitching uh, throughout, um, but I think you can just unscrew the uh, six speed manual, um, uh, which was uh, really uh, revolutionary uh, in the 2000s, most of the BMWs from the 1990s are all five speed. So yeah, a lovely uh, six speed uh, gear stick to uh, replace on the car, lovely and new because the uh, one on the car is just absolutely tatty and grotty and makes me feel ill. Uh, but yeah, can't wait to, to fit that new uh, gear stick knob uh, around 150 quid. Look, uh, people always complain about BMW parts and yes, they are expensive. Some parts are ridiculous, like the license plates, uh, holders, uh, which are you know, essentially 50 quid that you're paying for some plastic. That is exorbitant, but I think that the uh, gear stick does provide uh, value. Uh, it will last 10, 15 years uh, of uh, constant use. You know, every time you change uh, gear, you're going to be uh, using uh, that gear stick knob so for me I think it's tremendous value uh, and worth uh, paying uh, 150 quid rate. A good yank will allow you to remove the gear stick knob as you can see there I have just uh, yanked the gear stick uh, lever out it is uh, that simple to remove uh, the six speed M Sport gear stick and to install the new one the exact opposite and you just tap the gear stick uh, back uh, into place that's how simple and easy it is to uh, replace the gear stick knob on a BMW E91 Touring Another item that needs to be replaced on my BMW E91 Touring are the uh, mirrors. Unfortunately for me, I have ordered the uh, wrong part. Uh, so here I managed to get some mirrors that arrived uh, a few days ago. These are the mirrors. And yeah, there's that product code there. And there's also another product code that's very difficult to see. Uh, but anyway, uh, I've struggled to get these to fit. Um, this is what they look like. The uh, mirrors. Uh, they have uh, basically two uh, electrical connectors there because these are heated on uh, any of the uh, BMW E90, E91, E92, E93. They all have heated uh, mirrors. Uh, the M Sport ones especially on the coupe so e92 and e93 you've got the folded uh, mirrors uh, as an option uh, that you can choose pretty certain that's available probably on the other to the e90 and e91 as well uh, but yeah i went to correct these unfortunately the housing is different to uh, the one on the current uh, car uh, and these just do uh, not fit so i'm going to have to uh, sell these uh, or return them and try and order the uh, correct one. Uh, in order to uh, replace the mirror, you'll need uh, a trim removal tool. Um, and 
just need probably something like this here. Uh, and all you do really is on the mirror, you just basically scoop it out. You, you slip this underneath it and you uh, scoop it out. And just be very careful with those two uh, electrical wires. And then you, uh, you just pull those off and then you put the replacement mirror on. You just clip that back on. And it's uh, really a five minute uh, change. But unfortunately for me, as I've mentioned, uh, those uh, mirrors do not fit. So I'm going to have to uh, order the correct ones. So the passenger side door mirror has some corrosion at the top, which is why it needs to be replaced. It is pretty quick and easy to scoop the mirror out using the uh, trim tool. And once you have the mirror out, you can disconnect the two electrical wires that supply the current to heat the mirror. And there is the corrosion at the top of the mirror.